This is Twit. From a scalability perspective, we, we are real lovers of the Unix fork system call. So, uh, <laughs> so, so one of the things we do, you know, I, I don't know if you've launched LibreOffice, particularly on a, on a hard disk system, if, if you can remember those, um, but the, m- many of them are still out there. It takes significant time to start LibreOffice, and uh, that's, that's a bit of a downer. And it's, it's quite weighty just for one user. You know, there's a lot of functionality there, 8 million lines of code, 150 meg of, you know, stuff. And then it can start to interoperate and render beautiful, beautiful things and so on. But of course, you know, much like enterprise Java, you know, if you, if you run a Java application, you have a similar experience. It takes forever to start, and then you know, it just says hello world or something. Um, mm-hmm. But certainly, in the, you know, on the web server, we we run these things up, and then once it's started, you know, it's then relatively efficient. It's all done in, in threads or in, in our case, processes. So we we launch and initialize LibreOffice. We load all the fonts, all the dictionaries, all the you know, all of the configuration, the heavy. Heavy startup. All of the code is uh, pre-linked as well. Actually, it's not pre-linked. It's it's dynamically linked, and then we share all of that. Uh, so there's an LD binds now thing. If you want to be really geeky, uh, <laughs> so all sure. of the code is there, ready to go, and then we can fork. And uh, you know, we, we're just uh, you know, it's really snappy to load the document. So you do the document load. It's hard to do that ahead of time without the data, but uh, everything else should be uh, raring to go. And so yeah, it's it's efficient, and because of all that sharing, we can then get the per document memory use down to about 50 meg. Which is not not too bad for if you for obviously if you embed DVDs in it and giant images it's going to be bigger but you know for for a, a reasonable average for documents I think that's that's, that's quite good. And uh, so and, how did this get started? Well, that is a good question. So so you know we had this design for a long time. Actually, the very first LibreOffice conference in Paris was using a thing called GTK Broadway, which uses a similar approach. Alexander Larson uh, made that for Red Hat, and uh, it just kind of showcased what was possible. And uh, we were then just looking for people to fund it, really. I think one of, the, one of the problems with, of course, free software is how do you fund it? And uh, we found a company eventually called uh, IceWarp that were very interested in this, this model and helped kickstart that uh, with Calabra. And we, we invested a lot in this. And, you know, Calabra has continued to put a, a large amount of money uh, into this to try and, you know, to try and make it something really uh, awesome for people. People have wanted it for a long time. And, uh, you know, we want to deliver that, that, that freedom for people. And how did you get involved? Oh, how did I get involved? In in, in free software, in, in LibreOffice, in OpenOffice? LibreOffice. LibreOffice. Uh, well, open. so, so in, back in the day, yeah. rewinding. Uh, so, so my career started when my mother taught me to program um, on the BBC Micro. But a bit after that, <laughs> I, was at, I was at university. And uh, I became a Christian in my gap year. And uh, one of the things, it's funny, isn't it? How, how, how God puts his finger on one thing and says that thing. And that's, of course, the thing you don't want to change. But uh, in this case, everything was stolen on my computer. You know, my compiler, my operating system, all, all, all non-free software. And so very reluctantly, I used Linux instead um, initially. And then, you know, it killed my hardware, the first lot of hardware. And then after that, uh, things got better, you know, and it turned out to be really cool. And, you know, software freedom bit me uh, very, very early, thankfully, uh, due to that. And so, uh, yeah, GCC rejected my patch. Actually, they just didn't bother replying to my patch for about three years. Um, so I, I moved on to GNOME, and GNOME needed an office suite. So I reverse engineered Excel files for fun, and I worked on a thing called mm-hmm. Numeric with Miguel de Casa, who, who famous. And uh, that, that was fun. And then eventually, we just, Sun came along and said, hey, well, you know, we've just bought this Star, Star Division thing. We want to open source it. Which bits should we keep, and which bits should we, uh, you know, chuck? And uh, yeah, so just got involved with OpenOffice at that stage, tried to fuse it into GNOME, and eventually SUSE spun us out into Calabra Productivity, really. So there's a, there's a team at SUSE, and um, SUSE realized that perhaps mobile, cloud, office, PC, Windows stuff wasn't a great fit for uh, you know, a Linux uh, company. And they were just very, very good about it. Uh, really, really good. I, huge respect for their management. They, they spun us out, and they did, did good by us. And, and better, better still, they focus the company. And, and I think, you know, Nils, who runs Susan has just doing a great job making that a profitable open source business in, in a really good way. So, I, yeah, mm. so that, that's pretty much the story of Calabro uh, Productivity. LibreOffice, of course, came out of OpenOffice when, uh, you know, think we didn't see things improving under Oracle stewardship. Uh, they've been bad for a while. But that, that's, that's pretty much that, I guess. So I've been involved mm. for a, quite, a, quite a long time now. 